What does your stomach do right after the baby comes out? On the scale of one to 10, how painful was it? How did you get through the pain? Did you feel unsafe at all with a home birth? Can you go to baby? Okay. okay. Oh, I know, it's so hard when you have gas. Man, I feel like your gas is starting to smell. What's up, First Tribe? Back with a video by myself. I figured it was appropriate after the birth vlog to answer some questions that you guys have sent in through Instagram. There were tons of them and I could probably do like a 10 part video series. But I wanted to start off and just say thank you guys for all the comments and kind things that you guys have said about our birth video. I couldn't have done it without Nick. He was so supportive throughout the whole thing. And a lot of you guys are asking about more details and have certain questions in Hey, you making little noises? But a lot of these questions do have to do with birth and some of them are like in prep for birth, after birth, all of that stuff. And you guys have great ones. So let's go ahead and get into it. He has a lot of hiccups. He had a lot of hiccups in the womb and he has a lot of hiccups outside of the womb. Okay, so the first question that I got is what does your stomach do right after the baby comes out? Does it deflate or LOL? <laughs> I thought this was such a great question because I had the exact same one like while I was pregnant and before I was pregnant. I just didn't really know what would happen, honestly. And you see postpartum photos of people like sharing their journey and their stretch mark journey and all these things. But in reality, there's a lot of pain involved afterwards. Like what happened to me after I gave birth was the most ideal situation probably that could happen. Um, I'll get more into that. It technically, if you want to say deflate, it does deflate over time. It is a very gradual process. Like I'm recording this video when he's two weeks old. My stomach is still like, it still has like, what would you call like a mom pooch or whatever. Like I don't look pregnant anymore, if that makes sense. But you can tell that I was pregnant because I have stretch marks on my side and stretch marks on the front. Not a ton, but definitely you can tell. Biggest part where I got stretch marks was my boobs because I actually had like no boobs before I had a baby and those things have to get big to hold milk. <laughs> Anything for this little bean, right? Yeah? You just love when mom holds you because you just go right to sleep. So this next question is really great because it goes right into today's sponsor of the video. It says, what are some things you're doing to self-care or heal slash heal postpartum? And a lot of that looks like really just taking naps <laughs> um, as well as like I have gotten this is like probably TMI but I've gotten like smellier <laughs> and like like yellowish teeth like through the process of pregnancy and the smell thing is definitely like has to do with breastfeeding because your body's always putting out but the teeth thing I like was always scared to do anything with my teeth as far as like making them whiter or just like using good products that aren't bad for my body because they can be absorbed and the baby can actually absorb what you put in your mouth, what you put on your eyes, the makeup you use, like all of that stuff affects your baby. I was super glad when uh, Lumine wanted to sponsor this video uh, because I've heard such great things about their non-tox like teeth whitener, um, their whitening pen, and also like just the everyday care, like the toothbrush, toothpaste, all that stuff. So I've been using it and I've actually seen quite a difference and I wouldn't be telling you guys that if I wasn't like really seeing results because we don't like to talk about, wait, what are you doing? So I figured since we were talking a little bit about self-care and just like feeling good about yourself, I would show you guys like a little bit of my routine with the Lumine products. Oh, you gonna smile? You smiling for them? So normally I would do this in the bathroom. So this whitening kit that I got, you guys can also get um, bundled or you can buy separate things as well. What I love about all of these is the fact that it doesn't change the microbiome in your mouth. Um, a lot of products are super harsh on our mouth and they can give you the results that you're looking for, but it's actually super toxic to your body. And that's the reason why I said yes to actually working with them is because if something is like gonna be not toxic for my body and help me in achieving the results that I want, um, especially since my teeth have kind of yellowed a little bit through pregnancy. It's gonna give me a confidence boost to be able to make them wider. This is what I've been using lately is the wider teeth whitening strips. So what you do, take the upper and the bottom, you put them on for 30 minutes. They recommend that you do seven days in a row and then after you do those seven days, you can um, kind of space out the amount of times that you whiten your teeth. So I haven't done my strips for today yet. So 
I'm gonna show you guys how I do this. I'm really grateful because the whitening strips I've used in the past, like I said, very sensitive to um, certain foods and everything afterwards, but this doesn't have any peroxide. Um, it's enamel safe, super, super like easy on the gums and everything. So take the strip, bring it around. <laughs> okay. And then you wait for 30 minutes. Okay, I just took them off. <laughs> I've already noticed a difference. I don't even know what day this is of me doing the, sh the whitening strips, but there's all the other products that I've been using as well, like the uh, mouthwash and the toothpaste and the pen, all of those things. But the strips, I feel like make the biggest difference if you're like consistent, consistent with it. So I'll put a picture of the first time that I used them um, right here. And you can see a little bit of a difference this is what's happening now. My lipstick's probably coming off a little bit, but that's okay. The pen is really nice. Comes like this. This is a brand new one. I'll show you guys. Just looks like this. Ooh, there we go. And you just kind of use it as like spot treatment. So if you have like stain from like coffee or from eating any certain food that just kind of stains your teeth, like an acai drink from Starbucks, then that's a good one too to think about. Oh, is it about time? Is it about time for you to eat? Yeah, it's about time for him to eat. All right. Okay, so that was like my little teeth routine <laughs> as of late. And if you guys want to get 15% off any of Luminous products, you can click the link in the description and go to it and grab a few things. I definitely recommend um, like the full kit because you'll see the most transformation there. Okay, next question. How was the first week with your baby boy? Any advice for new moms? <laughs> Do not ask me, I'm very new to this and I have like no advice. I'm just figuring this out. But the first question, first part of that, how was the first week? First week was honestly very hard. I didn't really post much about that, but I figured I would do a video like this, like sharing the true experience of like just figuring out everything. I think like on day three, four, it was a transition of when my milk was coming in and he was just getting like ravenously hungry. And so I was like getting really worried. And so I started pumping a lot and then, you know, I, my breast got really full and I felt agitated and um, I still wasn't producing enough. I felt like I wasn't enough for my baby. That's just such a rough feeling to have. Um, but then my milk came in and I started seeing a lactation consultant. It was like really great. So the breastfeeding thing had been a little bit difficult and I plan on sharing a little bit more of that because breastfeeding is such a big part of having a baby if you choose to go that way. Um, not everybody does and not everybody has to, but it's something that I really wanted to do. I love like the bond that we get to have while we have those times together, even though sometimes I'm just like, dude, you want to feed all the time. But that's very common for newborns and they're just growing so fast. That's kind of a little bit of my, my first week experience. I would say it's a little bit more of an adjustment for Nick. Oh, that was a good burp. There's been a lot of hard parts for Nick getting adjusted to this because as women, when you're pregnant, you have like all these things that your body's kind of preparing you for, like for breastfeeding and for waking up in the middle of the night and always having to go to the bathroom, like things like that, I feel like prepare us as moms to get ready for this. But as for the guys, it's kind of like a shock for them, like how much responsibility it is really to have a baby. And he's handling it really well though. I know that like for us, the biggest thing has just been taking turns like with sleep whenever he sleeps sleeping during the day, like Nick will go and like take a nap. I'll take a nap like in different parts of the day. Um, it just makes me feel better whenever Nick is watching him, even if he's sleeping. Like I have a hard time for both of us sleeping at the same time while he's sleeping, even though they say that that's fine if you position the baby correctly. There's just so much advice and so many opinions out there that honestly, that's one of the harder parts of this whole thing. Hearing everybody's loud noises and opinions about everything um, because not all of it is the same and rarely is any of it the same, honestly. That's what makes it hard. You are just a sleepy little bean. I need to log that you're sleeping. There's like this app that I've been using. All right, this is a really great question and I just, I love being able to reflect on this because there's just so much that went on during the labor and delivery. But the question was, how did you see God shine through your labor? There was a lot of things that I had done to prepare for a home birth. 
um, and I can talk about that in the future. So one of the things that I did was um, I read a lot of books that had to do with like praying for your child, praying over the labor and delivery. I read a lot of like home birth stories that were positive. Um, I did read some that, you know, did end up in the hospital, but I think the biggest thing for me during the whole process and seeing God really shine through it was I felt like he was literally sustaining me the whole time because yes, since it was natural, I felt like all the endorphins and hormones and everything like carrying me through. So many times I was like crying out to the Lord in my head because there's so many negative thoughts that kind of just like creep in and they just want to take control. And there's so many opportunities for me to say out loud, I want to leave, I want to go get an epidural, I want to you know, like this is too hard. Like but I knew if I said something like that in my mind, then I was giving those words power over myself and then I might not progress as fast as I did. So I just had to keep playing this battle in my mind. And I felt like God was really like carrying me through that um, with just knowing that if I gave those words power, then they would definitely change the direction of my labor and delivery because I just knew that they had power. I've read so many verses in scripture that says that uh, life and death is in the power of the tongue. How much it matters the people that you surround yourself with because you may be a fool or you may be wise the rest of your life depending on um, whose advice you adhere to. Like those little things, they all came into play <laughs> whenever I was going through labor. So that was probably one thing that I was like super grateful for was all the conversations I had in my mind. It seemed like I was very quiet and I wasn't very talkative, like when it got pretty intense um, with the contractions and everything, but it was loud in my head, like a big loud conversation going on. That's why I I didn't open my eyes like once ever since like I got into the intensity of labor. Um, once I was like dilated at an eight, I had not opened my eyes. I did not want to get distracted. I didn't want to think about anything else other than just getting this baby out. I would say that's how I saw God shine and he really, really sustained me and just carried me through and I saw all the prayers really just come together. So, right buddy. Man, I just cannot believe babies can just sleep while you talk. This is a good one, it's a short one, because if you watch the video, you can know. It was definitely love at first sight. I cannot describe the feeling after like, just being in such intense, yes, pain, but also just like intense pressure and like exhaustion, just being so exhausted and just ready to be done, to like finally feel his body come out and to know that like this wasn't gonna go on forever and then to see his body like to see his face and everything and I was so like delirious I, I couldn't even really make out what he looked like at first I was just like so grateful and overwhelmed that like a baby actually came out of me <laughs> it was love at first sight but even if he didn't look the way that he does or wasn't cute I mean all babies are cute like, I'm gonna think my baby's cute, even if it's not cute. <laughs> it would still be love at first sight because God's literally given me this gift to cherish and to take care of. We got lots of pillows in the back, by the way. We got the boppy that helps with nursing. We got his little bed, his little um, snuggle me, little blanket that my cousin got him, and just a lot, lots of stuff everywhere. <laughs> really, really good question here. Um, this one says, did you have a moment where you wanted to give up? And I was trying to think back and I was watching through the footage and everything and I was recalling how I felt and everything, but there wasn't a single moment where I wanted to give up because I knew the moment that I had gone into labor, it was mission time, it's game time, and there is a goal to be completed. I'm super achievement, achievement oriented and not that I'm saying that I like need to achieve birth or anything like that, but I just knew the power that my mind had and if I just kept myself in the right headspace, then like birth and labor would just go better for me. I knew that. So I um, just kind of started telling myself like really strong points that I had never really spoken over myself. Um, and my doula midwife husband, like we all kind of like agreed together. It's like, I'm strong, I can do this. I'm not gonna like, give power to any of like the words or phrases that go through my mind that are just negative. There's a lot of things too that like were very deep that I think was holding me back for a second. Of, Am I gonna be a good mom? Sometimes even having that in the back of your mind can slow your labor because dwelling on something that your body needs to let go of. Um, and there's so much study that I've done on the brain and how it affects the body. And so, yeah, I, I didn't have a moment where I wanted to give up. I think I could pretend and say, yeah, it was really hard. And at this point I wanted to, but no, I think that when you're so focused, even if the pain is like so intense, 
you just use it to like force you into like progressing faster. Every labor and delivery, every birth experience is all so different. And so when I'm sharing my experience, I never want people to think that this is how it is across the board because I know that there's so many people who have planned to do a home birth and they, you know, had something happen and it had to change like last minute. And I had to come to that conclusion too, like several weeks before. I just had to accept the reality like, hey, if something happens, the most important thing is this baby coming into the world. And it doesn't matter what happens to my body. It doesn't matter the process. We're all gonna be okay if we just do what needs to be done. I think that just gave me a lot of peace too once I kind of like let that go in my mind too. We had a birth plan and we stuck to it and I'm glad that it, it, it worked. Did you feel unsafe at all with a home birth? No, not at all. If anything, I felt more safe at home than I would have at a hospital. And I think that speaks a lot about myself, not about like a hospital environment or a home environment. Personally for me, I'm just a very heavy environment person. I want to control who's in the room, who helps me through labor and delivery. The feelings that I'm feeling, I don't want to hear a beeping noise at a hospital if I don't have to. I knew that like, you know, if something were to happen, I, I would go to the hospital and do all that and whatnot. But um, to me, just giving birth at home really felt peaceful and just felt right for me. Um, and so I felt completely safe. I felt like I was prepared. I had gone to a, a birth class. I had seen my midwife like every week, my doula several times throughout my pregnancy. Um, I felt very supported, very prepared. And so I think having all of that in line really, really helped. On the scale of one to 10, how painful was it? How did you get through the pain? Kind of hard to answer after he's already here. If you were to ask me this question in the middle of it, I could probably give you a more um, accurate number because the truth is after you give birth or after I've given birth in my experience, I almost forgot about how painful everything was. There was a lot of footage that didn't make it into the birth vlog because people just don't want to watch like several hours of laboring. I feel like that would be really exhausting to watch. Out of a 10, I would say probably a nine. It was, it was like very hard, like it was a rough pain, especially whenever his head crowned and he came through. Um, you can tell in the video that I screamed. That was like the most high pitched my voice had ever gotten throughout the whole, throughout all the footage, even the raw footage. And that was just because that was the only thing I could do. That was the only thing I could think to do. In that moment where I had watched all these videos on how to breathe properly and everything in that one particular bit, there was nothing I could have done in that moment to just make, let me just breathe through it. No, I needed to just scream at that moment. <laughs> like that's how bad it hurt. One thing that this question doesn't ask that I think is really important to note is because I felt everything, I knew the right pace that my body wanted to go at with the contractions. I was able to slow down and listen to my midwife so that I didn't tear. That was one of my fears. That was like the, one of the biggest things that I kept praying into. And I knew like, okay, I need to accept this if it does happen. So I had already accepted it in my mind, I might tear. That's a very common thing to like tear down there, have a second degree tear, first degree, whatever, third degree. There's like so many different variants of it. But because I was able to feel everything and because you farting? <laughs> and because I paced myself, listened to my midwife, even whenever I was in super rough pain at that moment, I didn't tear and I feel like the recovery has been a lot better because of that. That's pretty amazing. And that is one thing that I was just like crying about and like super thankful for. I don't know, that was just something I was really worried about and I didn't wanna be worried about it. And I know it kind of sounds a little shallow, but I just really didn't want that to happen. But then again, if it did happen, I would have been okay. And I would be fine. I would be recovering as well and just probably doing a few different things, you know? Oh, I didn't answer the second part though. Uh, how did I get through the pain? So I shared a few little things with you guys. Um, one thing that really helped was breathing correctly. I watched this video by this girl named Bridget. She has this like whole channel that's so helpful. She's like a doula. I'll try to link her channel if I remember. She's a childbirth educator doula and she's so peaceful to watch, but she does these videos on breathing techniques whenever you um, are like in the process of labor and delivery and you practice it several weeks before you go into labor. And that's what I was doing. I would always take baths. I would set the atmosphere to be like super relaxing. I would practice the breathing techniques. Doing that, even though I wasn't able to carry those breaths throughout the whole process, especially whenever he was crowning and it was super painful, the breathing 
allows you to not tense up but let your body go so that your the contractions can do what they're supposed to if you're like tense and like not allowing your body to like just lean into the pain and um, work with it and even when you're pushing then things can slow down and even like go backwards if that makes any sense so breathing helped so much also kind of knowing scripture in my head like helped a lot especially when i was having like that battle in my mind so a lot of like pain related things i would say had a lot to do with how i thought about things there was even moments where there was like a fan in my face and my doula would come over and she would put some of my favorite excuse me she would put some of my favorite oils because i'm like an oiler love oils um she would put like valor oil or um white angelica those are like some of my favorites and your body has to process either pain or pleasure they can't really you can't really do both at once and so whenever you smell something that you really enjoy it's like pleasuring to your senses pleasuring to your, your nose and so whenever she was allowing me to breathe that in and i was doing the breathing techniques and i was in the middle of contraction i was not focusing on the pain yes it was still painful but my mind was more so distracted so that was helpful those are all the little things that were really really helpful so I probably need to stop at this point. Those are all the questions that I felt like answering. There were like so many of them and I'll probably answer them as time goes on, like more of those questions. But I'm just really grateful for you guys and all the things that you were curious about. I know that there's a lot of people who are out there that aren't pregnant or maybe are pregnant and are like considering like giving birth at home or maybe even just like considering going to a birth center or not getting an epidural or anything like that everybody does everything different and that's the thing i'm not like one of those people that thinks that there's only one way to birth because there's definitely so many options we have today but i will say my experience was like incredible and i wouldn't change it for the world shout out to zach by the way zach please keep this in here zach is our editor and he has been amazing at turning around these videos and like uh, i knew like before i became a mom that i did not want to edit videos anymore i had done them for nine plus years almost 10 years of editing zach lives in australia he also has a podcast with some other people you guys may know chad masters and gabriel conte conte what conti people are gonna get mad that i said that wrong we love you guys if you want to be a part of um any bible studies that we do uh, there is a opportunity to do that like every other week with us on patreon we share all of our content early there. Uh, we just have a really great community on Discord. All that stuff happens there. It's just been really fun. So you should join us over there. And all the money lately has been going to Hudson's diapers. <laughs> all right, I know you're asleep, but you're gonna say bye. You're gonna say bye. Look at you. <laughs> I love you. Okay guys, thank you for watching and um, don't forget to click the link in the bio for the 15% off for Luminu if you guys want to check that out. Super grateful that we got to work with them for this video. Bye guys, have a good day.